Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Barb Eichmeyer. Hi, Barb. Hi, Mary Kate. Barb is here today to talk to us about a reverse applique method using a back basting method and this is something yes. that you have written about and you've taught um, and you're going to be using it to teach us how to do sewing similar to these molas that we see out here on the table in front of us right yes it's um, back basting back basting applique mm -hmm. and um, the technique is reverse applique and the greatest example of them is the South the traditional South American molas because they have uh, multiple layers these kind of where am I here radiating lines, mm -hmm. and um, they're built by doing the reverse applique. So I get a lot of questions from people about doing reverse applique with the back basting method. And so I thought, well, the South American molas, that's what they're done with. And so I thought it's about the hardest thing I know of. Mm. And so I thought, well, let's just give it a try and see what happens. And okay. so I'd like to share with you what I've come up with. Okay, well, these are beautiful. I, I, I'm, it's such a pleasure to be able you to can see, see that, these You can ones. see that there's the the layers, how this is red all the way around, then the mm -hmm. next layer is yellow, and then applied on top, um, the different layers are built up, and then some embroidery details. So we'll do all that. Okay. In 10 minutes or less, right? <laughs> a minute to learn, a lifetime to master. <laughs> so here's the, here's the sample that I sewed using the technique. I kind of simplified it a little bit just to, just to kind of learn it. And so you can see that I have the radiating layers and then these little slits. I think these are really typical in those South American mm. molas. And um, the Kuna Indians who make them, it's uh, between Colombia and on an island between Colombia and Panama. And they, um, they use up all these little bits of scraps and so there's no rhyme or reason to the color or mm. the size of the slits or anything like that. Um, but this was kind of a lot to show on screen. So I sort of simplified it. We're just gonna work on just a leaf shape today. Okay. Um, I thought it would probably be good to kind of talk about back basting applique before we kind of get into that, if that's all right. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about the basic method. And this is something that you can use for uh, regular applique. Yeah. Or, you know, the positive ish image, if you will, or the reverse applique. It right. Works for both. Right. It's just in the layering of the fabrics. Um, but, and we'll get to the reverse part as we go through the leaf sample. Okay. But so back basting applique starts out, it's you draw your design on the wrong side of your background piece. And so this has been drawn on the wrong side. And then I put a swatch of fabric in front of it and baste it in in place by basting, by stitching right on that drawn line. Mm -hmm. Then I can see from the, from the, the dashed line that the basting leaves where to trim it and leave a seam allowance. The basting does two things, it outlines your shape and then it also, when you take the basting out, it leaves a little dotted line. And then when you needle turn it, it just turns right on that line. Oh, okay. It has kind of a memory. Mm -hmm. I can actually show you if you'd like to see. Sure. So this one here I have actually started. And I've gone around with my little scissors. And I've, I've, um, I just slip the scissors underneath the basting stitches. And I just snip every other one like so. And then as I get ready to stitch, they just pop out. And can you kind of see there, Mary-Kate, how it leaves uh, holes in it? I do. And so it wants to just turn right on that. Did you see how? I really didn't make it do that. It just did it by it itself. It really did. And then you do your little applique stitch. Like about like so. And then here's the finished piece. Mm -hmm. So it's been just stitched around. Mm -hmm. So so using that concept and then applying it to the reverse applique technique, right. we'll work with our leaf. So... Here's the finished leaf, and you can see that I have multiple layers here. I started with a, a lime green, and then I did an orange in the middle, and we're going to talk about these little inset colors in a few minutes, mm -hmm. and then my uh, kind of slate green on the top. And so um, you have to layer your fabric like that. But th So this is the leaf that we're going to work with. You start with your pattern all drawn out, and it's a mirror image. Do you see how my leaf do. flips the wrong way? Mm -hmm. and I've drawn all those radiating lines onto my pattern, 
because in a little bit I'm going to have to stitch on. And remember in the first, in the sample of the single leaf, we sewed right on the line. Mm -hmm. So we want all those lines with this method. Okay. So here we have the, the green is the bottom layer. And so that's the one I want to draw on. And so I've traced all those lines onto my leaf here. And then I'm going to put my second layer, which is the orange, right on top of that. And I'm going to cover it with the green to get going. But for these little inset colors, you need to um, put little... So you got to plan ahead. Yeah, you have to think ahead. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, because once you get going on it, you may not be able to get to those later. Mm -hmm. And so you can see this one I already have ready for us. It's really essentially this. So you see I had my leaf here. I had those little lines drawn on here, and I just have sewn swatches. Do you use a light box to know that you've got your a fabric? A light box, yes. That's a, that's a great question, Mary Kate, because a light box. I have a light box right next to my sewing machine oh. because I do this basting on the machine. But you know, you can hold it up to the light or put it up you on sure your, can. you know, window or something like that. Quilters are too. so creative; they come up with really great light box solutions. Yes, yes. So now I can cover this piece, and I'm ready to do my basting on this line. Now the sample's going forward. I don't have these inset pieces in because right, we just want to focus wanna, on the leaf. Yeah, we just okay. focus on the leaf. So here you can see that I have stitched on the outside line and then I skip two lines. And again, you still just have, you've got all oh, three layers here. Yes, let's okay, take a look at that. Okay, you do have all three layers. I have the green and the orange and, okay. the, and the slate color. I don't have the little inset pieces right, on this right. sample. So I stitched on the outside of the leaf. That's the first thing. And then I skipped two lines and I st stitched on the next line. And I did this on the sewing machine. Um, the first sample we looked at was basted by hand, mm -hmm. but um, these get a lot of layers and it gets hard to sew through all those layers by hand. And the sewing machine, it makes it a little easier. Okay. So, okay. So then we're ready to actually um, cut this and get ready to sew it, so to applique it. So this is multiple layers, so I'm using just a seam ripper to break a little hole in here. There's always the fear of going through too many layers. Right. And so I'm just gonna poke just a little hole, and if you just pick up a thread or two, you can stick just the tip of your seam ripper in there and, and make a hole. Then you can reach over and get your scissors, and then you can widen that hole with the scissors. Okay. And do you see how the orange is showing through mm -hmm. there? So then I can just cut leaving a seam allowance on the inside of this line. And I'm just gonna come over here and show you. And on the outside of that line. And do you see when I cut that away, it reveals that, isn't it pretty? It very. So um, we may come back to that. So after you get it all cut, then it looks something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where then you start breaking the basting stitches and doing the needle turn applique. Okay. And you have the dotted line from that machine basting stitch that just helps it to turn right on that edge. And so for your, um, the length that you want to set your machine at when you're using a machine for the basting? I, turn, I use whatever my machine comes on to. Okay. But um, you, know, you want it to be big enough that you can get your tip of your seam ripper under That's it. That's not going to be annoying it. to break. You know, you don't want it too short. I can show but you. But it doesn't right, have to be I can show you really right here. Long. Just so long as it's big enough that you can get the tip of your seam ripper yeah. under there because you can break like every fourth or fifth stitch like this. And then on the back, you can just loosen it. See how I'm kind of loosening yeah. that tail? And then when I pull it, it just pulls that basting oh, out right. and it leaves that line there. Great. Okay. So after that's been stitched, then it'll, it'll be something like that. So, mm -hmm. so do you see how I have this edge appliqued and that edge is appliqued mm -hmm. on the green? And so now I'm ready to sew for the orange. Do you remember those two lines we skipped a little while ago? Yes. Well, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna sew on those middle lines. Okay. So I have done the machine basting on the middle lines. And so when I turn it over, it's gonna look like that. Do you see how my basting shows on the front? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, poke a little hole in. I actually think this is kind of relaxing to do this kind of reverse applique. It's not, it's, you don't have to think very much. Mm -hmm. Just where do I cut the hole? The only part that seems really, like you have to really think about it is, is the design, mm -hmm. making sure you get your fabrics layered, making sure you're stitching on the correct line yes. to get the, the uh, yes. design it's, you want. But after that point, it, 
it really it's seems just to applique. Flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just applique. It's just applique, right? Um, it's helpful when you're drawing your design if you want to color it in with colored pencils. I was going to ask about yeah, that. Yeah, because if you want to see if your, color, if your colors are going to work well or not. So here we have this slit cut in there, and this time I can just go right down the middle. Mm-hmm. Do you remember on the green one I had to kind of cut a little piece away? Right. But this is just a slit, so I'm just going right down the middle. And after it's stitched, then the lime oh. green shows. That pops so much. So you see, in just those few steps, we have added all these radiating layers mm-hmm. of applique. Um, whereas if you were doing that with traditional applique, it would be one layer, then another layer, all the, all the steps all the way through to yes. complete the whole shape. Yes. So then at this point, you do switch over to just regular back basting applique, where you, um, it, we can actually flip this over. And so the next leaf shape going toward the center um, would just be done the way we did the first sample back at the beginning with a put a piece of fabric in front of it and back base applique it and the same is it would be yellow in this situation and then the same is true for the purple which would be the mo- the innermost the innermost leaf shape. Yep. okay just sew on the line this is a lot of layers by then so the machine is very is our friend right yeah I, yeah. I like hand work I wouldn't want to hand based through all those layers that'd if be, I could uh, avoid it yeah that would be a lot of work mm-hmm. I don't mind hand work and I still wouldn't want to do yeah. it. And then you can put a little accent of embroidery if mm-hmm. you like on it. So that brings us up to these, um, these slits that we mm-hmm. have in here. So do you remember back at the beginning when we put those colors in, those mm-hmm. swatches? Could we pull that sample back? Is this the one? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's just kind of um, go like, look, it even lines up right. So, <laughs> so when we, oh, excuse me while I fumble here. Um, I have just a little piece here just to kind of show you that there are two ways you can do this. You can actually um, go ahead and cover this with your top layer and then from the wrong side you can just sew around that eyeballing a seam allowance Mm -hmm. and then that will become your turn line. It's really kind of nice to do that because the gap doesn't open up very much more than whatever you sew Um, because the sewing kind of holds it in place. But you could also just transfer that line to the front and then cut a slit and then just needle turn it without the basting in there. Okay. And um, it sometimes spreads open a little bit more when you do that. So this little sample here, I have um, just two layers sandwiched together just to kind of illustrate how those slits are made. And um, so on um, this one, you can see that I've already kind of eyeballed and basted around the edge. Mm But this one, I don't have the line on the front. So let me show you a little trick. Okay. Our trick's great. Yes. The quilters are, know all kinds of tricks, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So this is dressmaker carbon paper. You know, you just buy it. Which is not something that um, would be in a, many quilters' arsenals. No. You know, <laughs> unless they were seamstresses we to, first. Yeah, which a lot of us aren't. Yeah, A lot of us true. don't learn that's garment true. sewing first. And then this is a, this is a tracing wheel. Mm-hmm. And you can find these in, in shops. Right. But um, the... This is this one was mine from when I was in 4-H. Love it. I still have it. And so it's nice to use it again. Mm-hmm. But you can see I'm just going to, you have to push down because this is waxy and you want to transfer the line. I'm just going to draw right on that line. You see I'm just rolling yep. along there. And so what that's going to do is it's going to transfer that line uh-huh. to the front. And now I could actually just take my seam ripper and open that end. And I could then put my scissors in, cut the slit. Let's just do it, shall we? Sure. Okay. And then you can just continue on. You see how I just, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, it's hard to cut through two layers with the tip of your seam ripper. Mm-hmm. So most people, I've no, I haven't had a student yet cut through the back, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. It'd probably be me when I'm demonstrating. Okay, and then I'm just cutting right on that line that I transferred to the front. Oh, great. And then I can just needle turn that in. Just the edge. same way you did before. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. When they're done this way, they tend to open up a little bit more though. Okay. And so, Something to be aware of. Yeah, and you don't have the dotted line for the, to to help you turn that edge. Right, right. So it might be a little more challenging. But it's so, uh, it cuts out a couple of steps, so it just it, it just depends on what you want to which approach you want to use. So Right, or how fast your deadline mm-hmm. is. Well, you brought one more sample I to um, show us a, just a different design coming from a different yeah, culture. It is. It's kind of a fusion thing. It's the mm-hmm. South American molas meets Korean roof tiles. And so this is a Korean roof tile design. And um, the, I've done this with just two layers of fabric, just the, the light green and then the navy blue. With some swatches. I did the little inset mm-hmm. pieces. And then this, is a, this turquoise ring is um, back basted on top. It was the last thing I did. It's so, beautiful, and it's um, a, a technique, again, that can be used for a variety of applications. I've seen it coming from other um, 
traditional cultures as well. So yeah. just keep your eyes out for it. Um, and then use that as a basis for your own designs going forward. Thank you so much for being here to it's show us this great. fantastic technique. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.